spine just like this. Right, right in there. Yes. The way over here is where you were. I well, you don't want these to be too wide back out. It's really a matter of preference. If you put parallels on it, you've got five inches back here. Say, these are parallel planks, too. Two and two. Uh, Fifteen, so then by there you'd be five, so. And then, then make, put three in it in here. All right, so you're down two five, two nine. Ten. All right, well, what I'm doing right now is I'm drawing a line below a magic line and uh, up forward on the boat from a midships forward. It's five inches from the magic line. And uh, we're going to put parallel planking on it from a midships forward. And that just means that uh, the plank will be ripped to five inches. It'll have to be edge set onto the boat, but very, very slightly because we know close to it, adjacent to it, is a magic line, which is a straight line. So even though we'll get a slight edge set down in this area, it will be very, very slight. Back aft, it's going to be a little bit different story because, you know, we didn't use the keel or anything about the line off lines from this, in this section to determine where we put that magic line. We did that by preference, by the way we wanted to, to plank from the magic line up. So then what happens is you have to deal with it from the magic line down, you have to deal with it. You've got to figure something out. The difference between the magic line up is, is that amidships, the planks are wider and they taper at the ends. That's what has to happen in order so that you don't get that magic line in some odd position that would make it so you'd have to twist the plank in terribly. It just it won't work. So we're kind of stuck with that. We like it. It's where we want it. So now from here down, we're going to do something a little bit different. Now this line that I just put in represents uh, a line that's 10 inches below the magic line up forward, but as we stretch the string on it, we're going to show you what happens. Uh, the 10 inches would be way up in here, and we didn't want to do that. What we wanted to do was gain some ground, because below the line, you've got a hollow. You've got to gain some ground to get down into here. Now, we didn't want to get down so low that our garbage planking or any planking would be parallel in, in any way the strip planking. It's still biased the strip planking everywhere back aft and in some important areas because the engine's going to be right in here. It's very nice to have the planking biased to each other there at the mast steps of forward at the forward mast steps, the same thing. The planking on the outside, the carvel planking, is quite biased to the strip planking. It's only really amidships that it parallels it to a certain degree, and that kind of shifts around a little tiny bit, so it's, it's really not a problem at all. So basically what we've done is we've pulled a line along that 5-inch or 10-inch line that's 10 inches from the magic line. Back here, it's quite a bit more than in 10 inches. So we're going to have two planks filling that space up forward. We're going to have four planks filling that space back here. So we're going to have four steelers, or one steeler in each plate, plank, which would mean two steelers. Either way you want to put it, it's the same sort of thing. We're going to have four planks back here, fading into two planks up forward here. Then we decided that we would put a garbage plank, or a, I mean a broad strake, underneath it, and up forward we've got it figured at five inches, and I think it comes back here to like six and a half and then we've got six and a half more and six and a half more. But we're generating all of these lines off of those forward lines with a string. They've got a little bit of a sag. You sag it a little tiny bit and it draws a beautiful line and then you can tack a batten right on it. Now, if there was any discrepancy in any one of these lines, a slight discrepancy, you could probably discover it right here on the boat and we've done it with a little bit wider batten than this, but it's a little bit of a pain in the neck to nail it on there because the thing wants to spring off and everything. So we're just using a narrower batten. And uh, we'll draw the line on there. 
we can take patterns of any of these lower planks and uh, what will happen is we'll lift that pattern and put it on the bench and if we find that one edge of that line is a little bit wavy or something we're going to draw that in with a much wider batten than we drew this line with so it will correct that line so what every time we make a move we don't want to multiply the error we want to correct the error and uh, believe me if you don't you have to do a whole lot of hand fitting and everything we want to do very very little hand fitting if any at all so you know that's the idea so we're going to draw some of these lines in here i'm actually going to take a magic marker line and uh we're going to draw a little bit of magic marker dashes in it so you can see where the line is. I don't want to spoil where we're going to take our actual pattern right here. So I'm going to kind of pick up close to that and put a line in there like that. You know, I'm just going to dash some lines in here where they know it won't, where I know it won't confuse us like that. And that kind of gives you guys at home the idea of where that plank runs right down through there like that and like I say from here forward it's just a parallel five inch plank so now we're gonna pull that batten Ken and I are both gonna pull it and we're gonna move it to another line so now we're gonna remove this batten and uh, we're gonna move it up to the next five inch line which would be this one right here Ken right like so let me put one nail in it right here and then I'm going to come back like that couple more nails here just because I'm lazy and I don't want to have a nail apron on uh -oh. okay now up forward like I said that plank those planks will be five inches wide back here they're expanding in width we don't want to put planks on this wide because they'll trouble to get into the rabbit. You'd have to hollow them so much. So basically, we're going to draw this line in with a pencil, same as before. So we have the accuracy of the pencil line where we're trying to take our pattern. And then I'll darken some of it up so you can see where it is. All right. Like that. Now, let's take the magic marker again and we'll define that one. Now, we're going to remove that. Now, like I said, that plank, those planks back after, just too wide. They're just too wide for the boat. So we're going to divide that in half. We've already done our divisions. It's going to be right there. Hang on. That's it. All right. Now, I'm going to pencil that one in. And this is the edge of a plank that makes up the two planks that come in to one up forward. Some people really would uh, be like slightly confused because you could actually make this the plank that goes all the way forward and have one steeler in it. We're not doing it that way. 
we're going to run both of these into one scarf up forward. So they'll be scarfed right on in the same spot. And we can move that scarf forwards and backwards anywhere we want. We'll put one set of scarfs in here maybe and one set of scarfs in here for where we join those two planks onto one. Now let me finish this line up here. I'll put a couple of magic marker dashes on that one. Now we're going to pull that one and move it down. So we're going to get to all of them here I think without too much trouble. All right, let's stick that one right in here. Just like that, Ken. Well, this is pretty convenient that we have the strip planking on the boat already because we can do these nice lines on here continually like a you know, if the boat were just framed, we wouldn't have that beautiful line on there, but you could still line it off. You know, I wanted to compare this a little tiny bit to uh, some other procedures, you know, like say Hereshoff. When Hereshoff used to line off his boats, they were upside down. That's the way he built the boats. And he also could use the half model, you know, on a table to experiment with uh, line off lines with a string. And he did both of those things. Now. Uh, the difference with a, a boat like this right here is very convenient, like I said, because we've got nothing in our way. We don't have any rib bands or anything like that in the way. We had rib bands on board this boat, on this boat, when we strip planked it, but we put the rib bands uh, parallel to the strip plank, and which was a little odd, but it made it so that we only had to remove a few rib bands as we went along and strip planked it. Now, this planking is biased to the strip planking, and uh, like I said, if you had a mold for every frame, a foot apart, you wouldn't have any rib bands on the outside. The molds would be fed, the frames would be applied, and you'd be able to do the same system, although you wouldn't be able to draw a line all the way, but you'd have frames one foot apart that you could put lines on. The system comes out exactly the same. So it's a little bit of a comparison. Uh, I think that, um, you know, if you don't at least establish the magic line when you've got a boat in molds then you don't know where to put the rib bands and you end up in all kinds of trouble the only one you need to establish for sure is the magic line and the rest of it can be dealt with in other ways but you do have to remove rib bands if you're going to you know uh, lay a mold on or uh, a uh, batten on there and be able to draw a beautiful line like this so you know a little bit of a comparison there so what we've done right here is we've drawn in now four planks that are going to fade into two planks. And we've pretty much got the angle where we want it. We don't want the planks to be like this, like you might see on a, um, uh, like a Rhodes 27 or say even on like a um, Concordia Yawl or something like that. We kind of struck a compromise. These planks back here have a little bit of a twist in them, but it isn't anything radical. And uh, this is exactly the way we want it. We're gaining ground with the Steelers. And uh, like I say, uh, some people would call that one Steeler into one plank. This would be the host plank, you know, and uh, it can be done that way. We're going to put two Steelers into one plank. So for two planks here, there'll be one scarf, and then we'll stagger it and we'll put another scarf at the next two planks. So that's basically what we've done. That's how we've expanded this right here. Now we're going to expand it from here down a little bit more because we're going to have the planks be five inches up forward, and they're like six and a half or six and three quarters back aft here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to remove this batten and put it down in here where we've planned it out for the top of one of the broad strakes and draw another line. And I've got my hammer. Let's put it right down here, Ken. Like that. We just push them up to the nails. The nails are where I want them. 
whenever you use a batten like this, as narrow as this one, you don't expect it to be exactly perfect. So uh, we're going to pick up these widths and everything onto the patterns, and we can re-scrutinize these lines when we're marking it out from our pattern onto our material. So very simply, I've said a million times, you have to keep track of accuracy. And what we do is we have a system that's going to actually kind of like multiply the accuracy as we go along. We don't want to have it so that we lose our accuracy as we proceed. Perfect. Now, let me just put a few black marks on that line. And I think it's starting to show in the camera now. Now we're going to yank that one and come right down here to the next one. The batten does lay against the nails just as nice as pie. And that line that we put the nails to was generated with a string. So <laughs> I'm going to show you a little bit more about that in a bit here. That is the top of our first broad strake right there. This will be the top of our second broad strake. And now we're going to pull the batten one more time. Right back here. That is going to be the top of our garbage plank right there. We've got it nine inches of garbage plank back aft. It just tapers right out up forward. We don't have any of those crazy nibs that you have to have when you're doing a traditionally caulked boat or anything like that. And uh, we're not concerned about the planking because I know people will say, oh, the planking's running right out to a feathered end and everything. Yeah, well, that's okay, because we're not caulking it. That feathered end is going to be glued to the next plank above it. Those feathered ends don't present us any problem whatsoever. I'll just darken this one up a little bit. And that completes our line off line. Look at that, Ken. We forgot to put a black mark on that one. Isn't that something? Yeah. <laughs> hold it right back up there again. We'll just hold it there because we, we don't need the accuracy. It'll be all right. So there you have it. I think it looks very organized. I like the shape of the garbage plank. We've got them biased in the planks down below. That's exactly what we wanted. I don't think these broad strakes are very wide at all. Many, many boats have got broad strakes that wide. There's not that much of a twist in here. That's not going to be any problems. We've shifted over to these narrower plank and or steel is where the curvature is because a number of reasons. The twist, the hollow that it takes. You know, if we had big wide planks, we, we wouldn't have enough thickness to get that plank, you know, to back out exactly right and lay in there and still come to the rabbit line. So, you know, re reduce the uh, width of the planks. And um, these do have a tiny bit of twist in them, but like I said, it's slight. And uh, we have the thickness in our materials. This is the way it is right here. You know, I think it looks organized. Then from here up, we're going to have another whole system that we're going to be getting involved in. And I think uh, below the magic line and above the magic line, they're both two uh, extraordinarily different systems, but uh, with some similarities. And uh, I guess the big one is, is that we're going to have to do it.